So you've been wondering, can I buy and sell a house at the same time? I'm here to tell you how you can make that happen. Hi, I'm Christy Bryant with the Best of Austin Living team, and I am here to share with you some tips on how to buy and sell a house at the same time. Selling and purchasing a house can be one of the most stressful situations that you ever go through. It's one of your biggest investments and somehow it just is a stressful situation. So how can you plan ahead to be able to sell and buy a house all at the same time? First of all, it does depend on the market that you're in. If you're in a seller's market like we are in Austin, Texas, it may not be as simple as it may be in other areas where there are some contingency type offers that you can put in that might be more readily acceptable. I'm going to go through about six different options today and hopefully it gives you a really great idea of what you can do, how you can strategize to sell your house and buy a new house with the least amount of stress possible. First of all, plan. You need a plan A, you need a plan B, and you need a plan C, and maybe a plan D. Talk through it, set expectations. It's not gonna be easy situation, so maybe if I'm setting expectations really low right now, you're gonna plan ahead and it's gonna be the most simple process because you're gonna hire a great realtor and they're gonna help you through it and it's all gonna work out. And plan, if you plan, it's gonna work out for you. So you might be a baby boomer who's looking to downsize. You might be a growing family that wants to upsize. There are lots of situations that people need to sell a home and then buy a home. Let's talk through some of the options to make it happen with the least amount of stress possible. Option one, you have enough cash in the bank to purchase that second home. You probably aren't watching this video if that's the situation. Option two, you're able to qualify to carry a second mortgage for a certain amount of time so you can hang on to the first home while you're purchasing the next home. You can get moved, sell the first home, carry that mortgage for a certain number of months, and then it's all good. Most likely this would work best for you if you're in a seller's market so that you have a high expectation the number of days of market for your home. You probably couldn't carry the mortgage forever, but it might be an option for you. Option three, this might be one of the least desirable options, but please know it is an option. Maybe you go ahead and sell your house, you move out, you find a temporary living situation, and then you find your new house. So temporary living situations. Now there are Airbnbs everywhere. It could be a residence inn, it could be a friend or family member's couch. Maybe that's what you need to do. You put everything into a pod or they're the U-Haul pods now, you get everything out of the house, you've sold the house, get yourself a temporary situation, and then you find the next place. For some people, that might be the best option. One ideal situation is if you have the summer off, somehow you have the summer off, you could plan on putting everything in storage, you go do your summer travels, you come back, find that fabulous house, and you move in. Maybe that's an option. Option four, in the Austin market, a typical closing if somebody is getting a loan, if a buyer's getting a loan, is 30 days or less. So one strategy could be that you can ask for a 60 day closing. So you go under contract and the closing would be 60 days from now. The upside of that is that it gives you time to find the next house. You would only wanna do this if you know the buyer is really solid and everything's gonna move forward. You close, hopefully it all lines up all the pieces of the puzzle. 60 days later you close and then you close on the next house the same day. You have moved out and you're ready to move in. Everything really has to match up in order for this to happen. A downside, well, what if for some reason the buyer flakes out and you've already purchased your under contract for the new house, things could get a little touchy. So there are a lot of downsides to this. If it matches up, great, it has a lot of risk. Option five, you put your house on the market, you find the next house that you want. Ideally in this situation, your home is actually already under contract as the seller. You find the home that you want as the buyer, and you're gonna put the offer in as a contingency contract. In the state of Texas, this is called the addendum for sale of other property by buyer. You're really, at this point, your house that you're selling needs to be on the market. You need to be able to prove that to the seller of the next house that you're purchasing. This can work out great if they accept a contingency contract. This is what we would call it, contingency contract. In the Austin market, it is very rare for a seller to accept a contingency contract because we are in a seller's market here in Austin. So it's rare that somebody will accept that. If they do, this, is, this can be one of the best situations. In our market, not many people will accept a contingency contract. 
Um, the downside for a contingency contract is that if the seller receives an offer from another buyer, they can give you notice that you have a certain amount of time, often it's 72 hours, that you either need to remove the contingency from your offer or you need to terminate your offer. You would get your earnest money back in this situation. So let's say you could handle having two mortgages for a couple of months. You're already under contract for your house. You, you have a real solid feeling that's gonna close. So maybe you do remove the contingency and you move forward. Or maybe you feel like there's a lot of risk and you just have to back out. You're gonna start over at this point. Option six, the lease back, or in some places it's called a post possession. This is one of my favorite situations. It happens a lot here in Austin where you negotiate, where we negotiate a 30, 60, 90 day lease back. That means you actually close on your property. As the seller, you close on your property. You go to the title company, you close, you get the funds for that. And then you rent the house back from the buyer for a certain amount of time, 30, 60, 90 days. This allows you to find the home that you want, go under contract for it, get moved, and everything's worked out because you have the cash from the first sale to help you with the sale, or excuse me, the purchase of the next property. This can be one of the best situations. It works if the seller for your current, for the home that you're going to purchase, that it works out all the timing. In most cases, it, it can work out. And in the seller's market, when there are often multiple offers, people are willing to do a lease back. If it helps them, if it gives them a better offer to you, they're willing to do that. So I hope that this gives you some information. I encourage you to have a plan A, plan B, plan C. Work with an experienced realtor who can help work through this with you so you can have as much ease as possible in a stressful situation. I encourage you not to use a Zestimate and not to use the appraised value of what your property taxes say that your house is worth when you're determining how much money that you will be getting back from the sale of your current home to be able to use for the next one. Be realistic. Just because the house across the street sold for $500,000, it doesn't mean that your house is gonna sell for $500,000. Be realistic. What upgrades does your home have? Really, what can you get for it? Just because you want maybe to have you know, $200,000 from the sale of your existing house to put towards the next one, the buyer who's looking at your house, they don't care about that. You gotta be realistic about your pricing. So make sure that you work with somebody who can um, really help you with that. A couple more tips to really help the whole situation. Start packing, get your stuff all moved out of the house. Most of my sellers, I encourage them to actually take about 50% of the furniture out. When buyers walk in, they want it to be really spacious. And then my last tip is work with a really great lender. A great lender can help the whole situation. If things get a little wonky, a great lender can help with some creative solutions to get you through it. If you're calling a 1-800 number, they all sometimes they can't help you out. So I encourage you to get pre-qualified, work with a great lender. I hope that these tips help you. If you like what I had to say, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel, like this video and comment, and I will be posting more videos every Monday. Yes, that's a child. Still a child. <laughs>